So as Java developers, we all love our IDEs, right? We cannot work on Java without an IDE. We're so used to it. And uh, the most popular IDE at this point is IntelliJ. Almost everybody uses IntelliJ. Eclipse is a close second, and then NetBeans. Some people use and swear by it. Never understood that. But IntelliJ is more or less the most popular one at this point. Uh, today, what I want to do is try a completely different program for Java development and see if it works. And the program I'm talking about is Visual Studio Code. Okay, How good is Visual Studio Code for working on Java projects? Does it work? Can we get work done with this thing? And I'm going to put this to the test, not by writing a simple Hello World Java application. right? I'm going to actually build a Spring Boot service and by the end of coding this program, we will see how good Visual Studio Code is and whether we can do serious Java development with it. The results can be a bit surprising. So let's check it out. So one of the reasons uh, why Java developers love IDEs is because none of us remember how to compile Java code using the command line, right? We cannot be bothered to remember all the compiler flags and all that stuff. IDEs make it very simple, right? You just click stuff, right click stuff, and you can build projects. You have autocomplete, all that good stuff, and we have come to rely on it as Java developers. So when you say, okay, I wanna not use a full-fledged IDE, and I wanna use something like Visual Studio Code, which is actually not a full IDE, the question comes, is it even possible to work on this thing? Because Visual Studio Code is kind of like a very popular choice for, for front-end developers, not so much for back-end developers. So the question is, how good is Java development experience with VS Code? Now, we might wonder, why am I doing this? Why would you even bother with VS Code? Why not just to use IntelliJ or Eclipse? The thing is, well, some of us are full stack developers. We like to work on both the front end and the back end. So when you're working on front end, you're very likely working on JavaScript technologies and you are using Visual Studio Code and JavaScript and TypeScript for it. So rather than having to switch between two editors, right, front end with VS Code, back end with IntelliJ, well, why not try Java with VS Code and see how it works, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a clean install of VS Code. I don't have anything installed apart from like a theme that I've customized. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the required extensions. I'm gonna take you through the flow of building a Java application with VS Code, and we will put it to the test. We will see how good VS Code does with a Java development. And again, I'm not doing a simple project. Well, it's technically simple, but I'm not doing like a hello world, one class project, all right? I wanna do a Spring Boot application. I wanna do a Spring Boot service. And uh, the example that I have, the scenario that I have is of like the Ease It Up uh, service. I don't even seen websites like this. Like you can, you can go to the website and say, is Facebook down or is it just me who's having a problem, right? Is that website down or up? So what you do is you provide a URL to that service and it's going to tell you, is that service up or not? Okay. So you can say, is it, is, is it down for everybody or is it just me, right? That kind of a service. So I want to build that kind of a service with Spring Boot and I want to do this from the scratch with VS Code. Okay. So let's see how this works. So here is my VS Code application open over here and uh, I again like I said I don't have any uh, plugins or anything like that installed it is bare bones it has this welcome page I'm gonna, I'm gonna close and it allows me to open a folder now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually create a new project but before I create the project I need to make sure that I have all the right extensions installed so the way it works with VS Code is that you don't really have ID capabilities out of the box but it has this thing called extensions, which are kind of like plugins, which you can install to VS Code and have it do those things, all right? You can add functionality to VS Code by installing those extensions. Um, this is the uh, tab which allows you to choose extensions. So if you click on this, it'll show you what are all the uh, available extensions, what is installed and what is available, okay? So here, if I can, if I, you know, if I wanna do Python development, I just type, Python, and here are all the Python extensions, okay? So I can get JavaScript extensions. I can, there are a bunch of different extensions which do a lot of stuff. But what we are interested in is Java, okay? So I'm gonna search for Java, and the most popular one, and this is something that I would recommend if you're gonna try Java development in VS Code, is this thing called Java Extension Pack, 
Okay, VS Code has a concept of extension packs, which is basically a bunch of different extensions bundled together. And you click that one install button, it's gonna install all those extensions, okay? So here are all the extensions that are available. So you have Visual Studio IntelliCode, which is basically uh, AI-assisted code completion. I know AI-assisted is a buzzword. Everything is AI these days. I don't know how good AI really is, apart from the good non-AI code completion, but it is the code completion uh, option that you have over here, right? So you have language support for Java. You have Java linting, more IntelliSense, uh, Java debugging, Maven support, test runner support, project manager support. There's a whole lot of stuff that you get out of this. So what I'm gonna do is just click install, okay? One good thing about VS Code is that it's free, okay? So no paying for uh, JetBrains to get uh, IntelliJ Enterprise Edition, you get some of these features for free. So that's another factor that's involved in this comparison, okay? So you have, you're basically comparing a free tool with a paid offering. So let's see how this stands. Okay, so I have installed this and now it's, uh, it's done, all right? So I have Java support. Now, what does this mean? We'll find out in a bit, but there is one other extension that I wanna install, which is Spring support, because we're gonna be building a Spring Boot application. If you're not using Spring Boot or any of the Spring technologies, you may not wanna install this, but since we are doing a Spring project, I'm gonna install Spring extensions, okay? So I'm gonna just search for Spring in this extensions tab, and now here you see there are a bunch of uh, stuff here, Spring Boot tools, well, here is something that's interesting. Spring Boot extension pack. Again, this is another extension pack which contains a bunch of these um, you know, extensions. Again, I'm gonna just click on install. Okay, so it's gonna install those stuff. Wait for it to complete and we're done. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new Java project. You notice here, now there is a create Java project button. This wasn't there before, right? Now it's come up. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna close this guy over here. And instead of creating a new Java project, I wanna create a new Spring project. And this is where the first one of the extensions that we've installed comes into the picture. So how would you create a new Spring Boot project? You go to the Spring Initializer, right? You go to start.spring.io and you configure this. Well, with the Spring uh, extension pack installed in VS Code. You can actually do that in VS Code and you don't have to go to the website, okay? So here's how you do it. First thing you do is you open the command palette, okay? VS Code has this concept of a command palette. You do that by typing shift command P or in uh, Windows, I think it's control shift P. I'm gonna put that in the video over here to tell you what the Windows shortcut is. You must be seeing this over here right now. Okay, so this is the shortcut to open the command palette. Now what you do here is like you get this text box and you have all the commands that are available. This is a whole lot of commands. It's not gonna show you everything here, but you can actually type stuff and it's going to suggest what are the commands that are available, okay? So if I were to type spring, I'm going to get a bunch of stuff here. Uh, there is a spring boot dashboard, which you're not there yet. Uh, we have spring initializer. See, there are three of them, okay? So add starters create a Gradle project, create a Maven project. I'm gonna choose the Maven project. This is basically the equivalent of going to start.spring.io and saying, hey, I want a Maven project, okay? So I'm gonna hit enter. Now it's selected this and now it's asking me the next question, okay? It's kind of like a wizard format. Okay, specify Spring Boot version, okay? I'm going to specify the latest stable one, which is 2.4.1. Again, it's selected. I can use arrows to select something else and then Hit enter. Project language, I'm gonna choose Java, and then the group ID, and then the artifact ID, okay? So the artifact ID I'm gonna say is the site up, okay? So that's the, that's the scenario, that's the application that we're building. We're building an application that's an API, and then you give it a site URL, it is gonna make the request and check if the site is up, okay? So I'm gonna hit enter. Now, what is the packaging that I need? I'm gonna need a jar, okay? I want it to be a smart jar. Java version, I'm gonna choose 14. And now, I get to choose the dependencies. You remember when you go to the Spring Initializer, you have this option where you can choose what are the dependencies that you need for your Spring Boot application. So here are all the dependencies, okay? Now, I'm gonna choose a bunch of these stuff. So what I need to do is, again, you know, move to the thing that we need using arrow keys. 
and then hit enter. Okay, so Spring Boot Dev Tools, enter. So it's selected, you notice here, it says selected one dependency. What else do I need? I need Spring Web, hit enter, selected two dependencies. And that's it, I think I'm done. I don't need anything else. So I'm going to say, here, here it is. They selected two dependencies, press enter to continue. I'm gonna press enter to continue, enter. And now it's telling me, where do you want me to save this project? Okay, so I'm gonna give it a directory. I'm gonna call this uh, code and I'm going to generate into this folder. So basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna generate that Spring Boot app. It's gonna download it from start spring.io and then it's gonna put it there, okay? So now it has given me this prompt over here. It says successfully generated, location is this, the code directory that I've added. And now it says, do you wanna open it? All right, I'm gonna click on this and it is going to open this project over here. Okay, there are a bunch of other welcome windows that it opened, so I'm gonna close these two welcome windows. Those are from the extension that we've added, okay? And now here, there are a couple of prompts, okay? So this one says, the workspace, oops, it went away. Let me click this here to bring it back up. Okay, the first one notification says, the workspace contains Java projects. Would you like to import them? Okay, the second one is, Maven wrapper is found in this workspace. Do, workspace, do you trust it? Okay, first of all, yes, I wanna import the Java project. So I'm gonna click yes. I could also have set, set always so that it always imports Java projects. Uh, let's look at this prompt now. Maven wrapper is found in this workspace. Do you trust it? Okay, so here is this Maven wrapper, M-E-N-W, okay? In case you don't know, Maven wrapper is basically this, this uh, script file that kind of wraps Maven so that you don't have to install it, okay? So let's say you, you get this, you're doing this whole thing, but you don't have Maven installed, okay? How would you run this thing? Well, you're gonna go get Maven, put it to the path, and then install it and all that stuff. You don't have to do this. But this Maven wrapper, what you do is you can just run this command, and this is going to take the place of an installed Maven, okay? So you have this mvnw, another mvnw.cmd for Windows. These are wrappers for Maven so that you kind of get Maven out of the box and you don't have to install it. The problem with this though is that this is a script, okay? It's a shell command. And VS Code is asking, hey, this is a shell command which can do anything from starting Maven to wiping out your whole hard disk because God knows what's in that shell command, in that shell file. So it's asking, do you trust it? Since I downloaded this from uh, the official, like downloaded this via the official Spring extension, I think I trust this thing. So I'm going to say, yes, I trust it. So I say, yes. Now here is another prompt that it has. Uh, do you want to exclude the VS Code Java project file settings like uh, .classpath.project.settings from the file explorer? Basically, do you want me to show you those files in the file explorer, which is over here? I don't want to see it. So I'm just gonna say exclude globally so that it, it excludes it all over the place, okay? It excludes across the board for all projects. You could also say exclude in workspace, so it is going to ask for this every time, okay? You, every time you open this uh, Java project, it's gonna ask you, and then you can say never so that it never gets excluded and you always see these dot class path and um, dot settings and all those files, okay? So I'm gonna click on exclude globally. You can choose whatever you want, but now you notice here, those files are not visible. They're still there, they're just not visible. Okay, so I'm going to close this Maven wrapper file, and now here is my spring project. Now if you notice, this doesn't look really like an IDE. So you have all these files over here, it's like, yeah, this thing does a nice collapse, but then it doesn't look like it's a, it's a package, right? So this is where, you have another view that is super handy, which is this view called Java Projects. Okay, so if you expand this, this is more like, and I'm gonna collapse this view here, okay? So this is more like what you're familiar with in uh, IntelliJ. So you see here, this is the project, this is the site app, and now here I have the SRC main Java put together, SRC main resources put together, SRC test Java over here, here is the system library that we have. We have asked Java uh, 14, so that Java library is over here. And then here are all the Maven dependencies that my Spring Boot project contains. And guess what? It actually downloaded them all. I didn't have to do anything. It just picked them up and made them available 
over here okay so it is in the home folder dot m2 this might be in a different location depending on your maven configuration but this is it so now i have the project set up and ready to go okay so so far i would say this is pretty much the same as an intellij experience except for these prompts because i'm kind of starting from a clean slate if you chose those always options for those prompts you wouldn't get asked those prompts again so opening and creating a new project would be fairly simple and i would say this is actually a step up from the intellij free edition so opening a spring project uh, creating a new Spring project is not possible in the community edition of IntelliJ, unless I'm mistaken here. So if I'm mistaken, let me know in the comments and correct me. But as far as I know, you need the paid version of IntelliJ to create Spring projects, okay, from start.spring.io. This one's a free solution and it's, I think it did well so far, right? So let's see how the experience, development experience is like. So now I am going to open this class which is called, um, is the site app application. So this is a Java class. I'm gonna expand this just a little bit more. And uh, what this does is, well, actually I don't want this whole thing to be zoomed out. So what I'm gonna do is open the code preferences, preferences settings. And uh, in my text editor, I'm going to change the font size here a little bit. Okay, here's the font size. I'm going to make this 16. So, and then press save. This is going to increase just the font size and not the size of these uh, icons and uh, the labels and the menus and all that stuff. Okay, so when you open this Java file, you notice that this is a Spring Boot application. You have the Spring Boot application annotation here, which says that this is the main class and you have a main method here. You notice there is one other thing that VS Code does for you. It has this run debug option. Okay, this is what's referred to in VS Code parallels as code lens. They call it code lens. The idea is that there are certain areas in the code where you have these actions. You can click on it and it's gonna do some stuff, okay? So here is this run link. I can click on it and it's actually gonna start to run this main method, okay? It detects that it's a Java main method, so it knows how to run it, okay? So here's what happens. Let me click this run, okay? I'm gonna click on run and uh, it is compiling, it's doing some stuff. And then here is the terminal and here is my Spring Boot application up and running. Awesome, okay. So this wasn't so bad either, all right? So here is my uh, local host colon 8080, all right? So this is, the, uh, this is the port where the application is running. So I have this application up and running. So that's kind of awesome. So let me actually switch to uh, the browser and make a request to make sure I get the error page, the classic white label, er white label error page that Spring Boot has. Okay, so here's my Firefox window. I'm going to do localhost colon 8080. And yes, I get the white label error page. So our application server is up and running, okay? So you don't need to remember the Java compiler flags even when you're working on Java in VS Code. So it's been, it's been fairly good so far, but the real test is when we actually write code, okay? So let's see how this performs. So what, what do I wanna do? I wanna create an app which takes in a URL, okay? And it checks, it makes a ping to make sure that that URL is up. So the first thing I need is a controller, okay? so. Let's see if there is a right-click create controller. Well, there isn't a controller right-click option, okay? So this doesn't know that this is a Spring Boot application. It doesn't have an option of creating a controller, but it has an option of creating a new Java class, okay? So let's do that. And now here it gives me the same text box, right? This is the standard uh, UI pattern in VS Code, like input the class name. So let's see if a package name works. I'm gonna call this controllers dot um, URL check controller. Okay, so this is the controller which is going to check for a certain URL. And notice here, the, the package name is coming up over here. It's not just the class name, okay? It's just controllers dot URL check controller. I'm hoping it is gonna create a package and then put this class in there, uh, which, it did, all right, 
Good so far. So it's created the controllers package and put this class in here. And now it gives me an option of saying, okay, do you want a class or an interface or an enum or a record or an abstract or at interface, like an annotation? So it gives me a bunch of options. It's, uh, it's pretty modern. It has a record here already. Okay, so that's cool. So you have class, interface, enum, record, abstract class, or an annotation. So what I want is a class because we are creating a Spring MVC controller. So I'm gonna say class URL check controller. Okay, good so far. Now what I wanna do next is to make this a REST controller because I'll be making this like a REST API for this. They can pass in a query param, which is the URL that I wanna check. And it's gonna tell, is this site up or down? Okay, so I'm gonna make this a REST controller. And now this is another test, okay? Let's see if it can identify that this is an import, okay? So I need to import this REST controller and um, how easy or hard is it? So I'm gonna say add REST, it finds it. All right, cool. REST controller from ARG Spring Framework Web, okay? So I can click on this expand. It shows web bind annotation REST controller. Yes, this is exactly what I want, okay? And now I have marked this as a REST controller. And now I need a method, okay? So this is gonna be a get method. I'm gonna call this public and uh, boolean, right? Is the site up or down? Or maybe it's, yeah, let me, let me make it a string so that uh, I can basically send the message because there could be other cases as well. Like the URL isn't formed well, you know, 404, whatever else, okay? So uh, I'm gonna call this is URL or maybe get URL status message, okay, which is what this is. And I'm going to take as an argument, a string URL. And uh, what I need is, let me close this guy here. What I need is for this to um, make a ping and identify if the site is up or not, okay? So uh, first of all, I need to make this a get mapping, okay? And um, let me put this a URL slash check because I'm checking if this URL is up or not. So it's gonna be a slash check. And um, let me make this a query param, okay? So I'm gonna put the URL as a query param. And uh, the way to do that is by using at request param autocomplete. Seems to be working fine so far, all right? So at request param string URL. Does it have the string? Did it remove it? That's interesting. Yeah, it had the string and it removed it. You see here, request param, and string goes away. That's odd. I don't know if it's a bug, but uh, that's probably the first negative mark I'm gonna give to this guy. Okay, so uh, request param, string URL. So now, now I have the string URL. What do I do with it? Now I need to make an HTTP connection, okay? Make a get request and see if I get a successful response. That's what's gonna be the, the, the logic of this method, all right? So I'm gonna create a couple of um, constants over here. Uh, private final string. Uh, I'm gonna call it like a, a bunch of messages, right? What are the messages I wanna show depending on uh, what the condition is? So if the site is up, I'm gonna say, yay, site is up, site is down, it's like no. So is, site up equals site is up. Okay, now I'm also going to do uh, is site down, or actually let me make this, it's not a question, it's an answer. Site is up, site is down, Okay, and now how, I, what I need to do is have like a, a string return message is an empty string. And based on one of these things, I'm gonna assign one of those constants to this thing and then return it at the end, okay? So in the end, it's going to be return, return message. Okay, so now how do I check this? Well, the first thing I need to do is to make uh, create this URL thing and then send it to HTTP URL connection, all right? 
So I'm going to do a URL. I think it's capital URL. Yeah, java.net URL. Okay, so this is what I need. So I'm gonna hit enter. And uh, every time you do this, what, what this is doing is like you would expect, it's, it's actually importing it. So VS Code is actually, the, the extension, the Java extension is actually importing it. So you don't have to, uh, you don't have to do it manually, uh, which is cool. Okay, so you have the URL object equals, I think there is a constructor uh, which takes in, yeah, there is a constructor which takes in a string. You see this here? So this is what I need. So I'm going to do a URL of URL. Okay, now I might get an error here. What's the error? What's happening? Ah, it throws malformed URL exception. If I mouse over, it says unhandled exception type malformed URL exception. Okay, so there is a quick fix link over here. What happens if I click on it? I get an option, add throws declaration or surround with try catch. I'm gonna surround with try catch because I don't wanna throw a message, uh, throw an error. If there is a malformed exception, I'm gonna show a message which says um, URL is incorrect, okay? So let me actually create that uh, thing as well over here. So I'm gonna be like, uh, let's call this incorrect URL. And the message is gonna be URL is incorrect. Ah, I didn't mean to shout, sorry. Uh, caps lock, I pressed it by accident, is incorrect. Okay, so to do auto-generated catch block, thank you VS Code for giving me that, but I don't need it right now. What I'm gonna do is return message equals incorrect URL. Okay, so now I need to open a connection. I think that's HTTP connection. Let's see. Connection, HTTP URL connection. Okay, so it's pretty smart and it's autocomplete. So that's cool. HTTP URL connection, connection equals URL object dot, and there is an open connection here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to Start a new connection. Now this gives me an error. What does it say? It says type mismatch. Cannot convert from URL connection to HTTP URL connection. I think this needs a cast. So if you do quick fix, add cast. Cool. So it's not bad so far. It seems to be doing everything that I would expect a proper Java IDE to do. So this is pretty cool. It's actually showing one more error message. Okay, unhandled IO exception. Okay, quick fix again, maybe add it to, okay, now I have an extra option, right? I can add the catch class to the surrounding try, or I can add an exception to the existing catch class, which is what I prefer. I can also surround with the try catch, which basically puts another try catch, a nested try catch, or I can just add the throws declaration to the method itself. Well, I like I like this one, right? I wanna add to the existing try, oh no, actually, not what I wanted. I actually wanted uh, add a catch class to the surrounding track. Yes, this is what I want. So in this case, if there is an IO exception, what does it mean? This means that the site is down, okay? It's having a problem with the IO. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return the site is down message, okay? So I'm gonna say return, return message equals site is done, okay? And uh, when this works, so here I'm going to do, uh, the connection is open. Now I'm gonna have to do a get call, okay? So I'm gonna do a connection dot set um, request method, all right? This is exactly what I need. This is probably the AI thing. How did it know that this is exactly what I need, right? See, the, see this? I do a connection dot and the first thing that comes up is request, set request method, okay? So this is either something that it's noticed the pattern of people coding, they get the connection and then the immediate next thing they do is to set the request method, or it's just fluke. I don't know. Anyway, really cool that the first thing came up. All right, so I'm gonna say set request method and then uh, what is this guy? Is this a string? It is a string. So I'm gonna set a string get. 
Okay, so I've set the request method and now I need to connect. I'm gonna do a connection dot, let's see if connect comes up first. <laughs> no, it did not. <laughs> All right, so this is probably not AI. It was probably just fluke. So if it really had AI, it would have said connect here and then uh, disconnect afterwards. Anyway, so I'm gonna do connect and then uh, now I'm going to, once it's connected and it hasn't thrown any exception, I need to check the response code as well. So what if it successfully connected, but the response code was like a 404? Okay, that's not good. So what I need to do is I say connection dot get response code. If this is equal to 404, actually let me make this like, if this is, as long as it's 200, it's okay. If it is 404 or any of the 400s or any of the 500s, that means that that's an error, right? And the site is down. So that kind of makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is uh, check if it's between 200 and um, 299. I'm just gonna divide by uh, 100, all right? So if, oops, if connection.response code divided by 100 is equal to, or maybe if it's, not equal to two, that means that it's not any of the 200 response codes. Okay, so in which case I'm gonna mark it as down, or maybe I can do uh, three as well. So even three is, uh, is allowed. So let's say um, int response code equals, actually let me call it response code category probably a bad name, but uh, you get the idea. So what I'm gonna do is put the response code category over here. If the response code category is not equal to two, or response code category not equal to three, that means that the site is down, okay? So I'm gonna say return message is that the site is down, okay? And else, return message equals site is up. And this is, this is pretty much my code. This is about it, I think. And then here at the end, I'm returning the message. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now, since we have added um, DevTools, this should do a live reload. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is to make, go to my browser, and then uh, here I'm going to do a slash check, and then I'm gonna pass URL as an argument, right? URL equals, let's say, let's see if Google is up, okay? HTTPS colon double slash www.google.com. Okay, that didn't quite work. Let's see, it says 404. Let's see if it's, why it's not seeing this controller. I have marked it as rest controller. Ah, this is why. Controllers has gone into a separate package. It should be under, under this. So let's see if drag and drop works. Can I drag this and put this over here? Yeah, drag and drop doesn't seem to be working. Can I drag the class? That doesn't seem to be working either. So now what I need to do is maybe change this guy over here to say um, io dot is the site up dot controllers. Okay, it has to be within the io dot java brains uh, dot is the site up package, otherwise the spring scan is not gonna see it. So now uh, can I move this thing, move, Okay, so this works better. Now, this thing is gone. Let's try refresh. There you go. Okay, so controllers has gone inside this package. So that was a problem. So let's try restarting this again. I'm gonna go to the main application and click run. All right, so I'm gonna go to my browser and uh, type the URL slash check. And uh, again, an error saying string parameter URL is not present. Okay, so let's add that. I'm gonna check if 
um, Google this up, okay? So HTTPS colon double slash www.google.com and it says the site is up. And uh, if I make a mistake here, it doesn't find it, all right? Google.com is not available, say site is down, okay? And uh, let's do um, javabrains.io. Gotta do a bit of self plug, right? Javabrains.io is up, yay. All right, so let's find a, a website which is uh, which is down and uh, it still responds with a URL. Let me go to GitHub and uh, explore some some repository. Let's go to topics, Gradle, or maybe training. Okay, so this one's training, which is fine. So this particular URL should be available. Okay, URL equals, put that URL, that site is up. But if I type some nonsense here, it should not be up. It shows a page, all right? It shows a 404, but we should be able to catch that 404 and still say site is down in spite of us actually getting a response. So I'm gonna type this URL, hit enter, and it says site is down like you would expect. So cool, our application is working fine. And uh, notice what we did. We actually did this whole thing without really doing a lot of the manual steps that you would do if you were just using a plain editor, right? We didn't have to import stuff. It had autocomplete. It had an ability for you to actually start a project from the scratch right in the editor itself, which I think is really cool. This actually surpassed my expectation of how uh, VS Code would work for a Java project. It's been pretty cool, and I don't see it as being less than IntelliJ in what we've done so far. It's been pretty cool. What is this? It's an unneeded import, quick fix, remove unused imports. All right, cool. So it seems to be doing everything that I would expect uh, an IDE to do. Uh, there are a bunch of other things that you can do with this thing. For example, uh, here are Maven dependencies. I can actually add a Maven dependency by clicking on this plus. Okay, well, let's do a search for Apache Commons. Um, it's gonna tell all the, um, yeah, this is probably not sorted in uh, order of popularity. Um, would be a good thing to have Apache Commons in, at the top. Pretty sure these ones, Commons by Srujan Kujmar is probably not as popular as Apache Commons. So this is probably doing like a last updated sort or I don't know if it's alphabetical, it's not alphabetical for this as well. So I don't know how it's ordering this, but it would be nice if it had uh, a good um, sorting based on popularity. Let's say Apache Commons Core. Okay, so this is better. Now it tells you the exact uh, dependencies that you need. So what this would allow you to do is basically choose one of these and uh, let's say common JCI core, okay? So I hit enter, it basically puts this automatically. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So you have a bunch of these things uh, that you can do. It's, uh, I think it's it's a pretty good program to work on uh, work on using, uh, using Java and uh, yeah. Pretty happy with how it's turned out. Uh, there are a bunch of other integrations with like, for example, Git. So here is uh, the Git integration. You can initialize a repository here, which makes it like a, you get source control over here. And now here are all the changes that you have uh, pending. Let me save this guy over here. And I'm not going to save pom.xml because uh, there was just some dependency that I added. Didn't mean to do that. So here now I can say uh, first commit and then press this thing and then it says, okay, there are no stages, uh, changes to commit. Do you wanna commit everything? I say always commit everything. And then, uh, okay, make sure you configure your username and user.email and now I can do that over here. And once I do that, I'm not gonna do it right now, but basically once you configure that, this is going to work seamlessly, all right? You just press this commit button and it is going to commit and then you can, um, you can push, you can pull, all this stuff happens right here. So. I really don't want this to be a tutorial for VS Code. I was just trying to explore how VS Code works for Java development. Uh, we did a very simple uh, Java project using VS Code. And um, I would say 
thumbs up, give it a try. Uh, let me know in the comments if you wanna try uh, VS Code. If you've already been trying VS Code, how has it been, any problems that you've had, or uh, if I've maybe convinced you to at least give it a shot. Let me know in the comments what you think. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.